Well, good morning. My name is Stephen Stout. I'm one of the pre-sales consultants at Hydera. Today we're going to look at uh, capturing deadlocks within the Hydera Diagnostic Manager tool and how it displays and captures them. The first thing really to do is to make sure that we are actually capturing those information. And if you come within the uh, Hydera Diagnostic Manager dashboard, you get to see on the right hand side the various instances. Clicking into those then we can come into the properties and this will actually allow us to make sure that we are collecting the, the deadlock information for this particular instance. Now, this is the general properties page you'll see in a number of situations but the actual deadlock information is switched on here on the activities monitor. So once you've actually configured that and you've got the system running, you'll then see, if you're looking at the sessions information, those deadlocks being recorded within here. And you can see the pink line going up and down where deadlocks are being recorded. Actually, in the background down here, I've got some background processes that are actually creating the deadlocks for us to look see at. Okay, so now looking at this, sure we can see the screen and we can see the deadlocks coming through, but let's just do some more drill down and understand what's going on with them. So as is typical with Diagnostic Manager, you can find multiple ways to navigate through the tool, and it doesn't matter, matter which way you choose. But the easiest way is probably just to click directly on the graph and let us take us into the session's information. You can see on the top right, by the way, that it's actually navigated in the variety of ways, but into the sessions. So looking in the sessions, we get the standard sort of sessions information, so how responsive the server is, you know, looking at the select one from master, response time type of information, and other sort of background information on the sessions but we specifically now are looking at the deadlock so let's just again click in here and go to look at the deadlock information coming through so we're now on the blocking page of the sessions and we can see various bits of information being coming in the background here this is all real time we get to see the blocking reports but for the purposes of what we're looking at today this is also where I'll see the deadlock reports if I just double click on here I can actually go and bring up a deadlock report and this will then give me a lot more information about what was involved in that deadlock embrace. So I can see the two SPIDs are actually involved in the deadlock embrace and the SPID with the pink or slightly graphical representation here is the SPID that was, that was killed, the victim that rolled back. Clicking on it then shows me down here more information about what that SPID particularly was doing. So I can see that for example the was user Katia, we can see the uh, host is in the process, we're coming in from the uh, SQL command, which database, etc., and so forth, and even down here to the nature of the SQL that was being issued. I can, by the way, see that SQL as well if I hover up here over the SQL stage. But probably most usefully is the fact that I can export this data out in XDL format. Now, XDL is one of Microsoft's XML extension formats, but the great use in this is that you can then give this to file directly to the developers and they can then open it in SQL Server Studio and it will immediately show them which objects are actually involved in that deadlock embrace. Because of course deadlocks are caused by the objects being locked in an inconsistent order and first way to address that is to understand which objects are actually involved there.